thank you so, so, so much for sharing your testimony, your story. How the seeds are being planted, ladies. That's one of my flower pots. It is a privilege and honor to introduce Miss Julia McDade, another one of our unstoppable women here today. I was blessed to have my path cross with Julia through a mutual friend, Maggie Flynn. When Maggie told me about Julia's recent accomplishments, I just knew I had to have her a part of the Unstoppable You team. Her wisdom and insight is invaluable. Miss McDade is a mother, grandmother, retired Navy Nurse Corps officer, and a recent graduate from Liberty University with her master's degree as a nurse educator. Miss McDade is here today to encourage and remind each one of us that developing and maintaining an unstoppable attitude is a lifelong adventure and has no expiration date. Please welcome Miss Julia McDade. Our, our body 
changes. The joints are going to really pay for what I was doing a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, our eyes, you know, my, my vision is uh, much different, so I had to use, you know, a giant size font so I could put that stuff. Um, but one of the things that I had done, I had started doing before I started my program, uh, I had read somewhere that as you get older, you need to, you know, like try and learn a new language. So I picked up a book and I don't learn how to read Greek. I just think that's awesome. So I went at a Bible bookstore back home. They had one. Oh, I'm going to do this. And I, you know, Alpha, Beta, Delta, Epsilon. Well, okay, I may learn that alphabet one of these days. But anyway, it's good for me. It's good for my mind. So then I started this nursing program. <coughs> Um, every class, it seemed like I was, you know, I'm not going to make it through, and then I won't have to do any more classes, but I kept passing, you know. <laughs> okay, and then all of a sudden, I was finished with my requirements, you know. But um, in that process, I realized that we all have what I'm going to call stopping moments. They are, they are moments, in my, in my opinion, I consider a stoppable moment any event or experiences that cause a person to consider changing course or cause such discouragement that you just stop trying and I won't even try that anymore. But changing a course can be the decision to say, this is a roadblock, but I want not what's on the other side. I'm going to climb up and over, I'm going to climb around. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna get in an airplane and go up and over if I I mean I'm gonna do whatever I have to get because I really want what's on that other side. That's what makes us unstoppable in our lives. So for me, the the thing that supported me in some of my roadblocks, my my stoppable moments, is my faith. I I, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't. Because uh, you know God has supported me and and challenged me and been with me, provided me friends that that I just know they're from God and they have their blessings that yeah. I just don't have words for. Um, my friend Teresa is also a breast cancer survivor who has had her journey and um, she she has shown me what a true unstoppable woman is and so I appreciate her journey. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about some of my unstop my stoppable moments that maybe will help somebody out there that's that's maybe going through a similar moment. Um, as a child, I uh, I was in remedial. I was I was not. I I took dumb dumb classes. I barely passed those. I was compared to my sister, who was a straight A student. Okay, she was going to be an executive secretary. She, she was the go-getter. My mother went into high school in front of me, in front of my counselor, and she told the counselor, "You take her out of that algebra class that she's failing, because she's just going to get married and have kids." Now, if that isn't a stoppable moment in someone's life, um, and I believed her, um, but then that didn't happen. So I went to a Bible college. I went to a Bible college, and here at the Bible college, I didn't get married to a preacher. I didn't learn how to play a piano, because I can't carry it too. Um, so, then yeah, I failed out of Bible college. I, at the end of that year, I couldn't, I, what else am I going to do? So, I joined the Navy. I went from that stoppable moment of failing at a Bible college for, quite honestly, it challenged my faith in people, not so much my faith in God. I wasn't sure what he wanted to do with me, but it, it challenged my faith in people and, and myself. I thought was a failure. And so it was a stoppable moment. I ended up joining the Navy. Well, I'm here to tell you that that was what God, I think, wanted for my life. I ended up using the GI Bill uh, from my first enlistment. I got my associate degree in nursing, which Hey, I felt algebra in high school. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do any of those classes. You have to take chemistry. Well, I had a big guy. He, he was Al Cameron. You know how you remember those counselor? He told me. He yelled at me. 
in his tongue. He said, you don't say those words until you can come back in my office and you can show me those grades. I want you to try Okay, so I did. I tried and I thought I would fail, but I didn't because as an adult, you have a different motivation. You have a different um, focus. And I can't pass it. <laughs> And then I got into the nursing program. And it's like, oh, man. And then I not only got into the, I, I was given letters of acceptance into the respiratory program and the cardiovascular program. And I, I wasn't straight A's. But God was wanting, showing me and blessing me. And I ended up choosing nursing, which was a blessing. I ended up being the first technical nurse warrant officer in the Navy. Wow. Uh, we had very short-lived program. There was only a couple hundred of us, but it was during a nursing shortage in the 90s, and they wanted to bring us on board, use that, and as the first one, it was, I, I'm at Admiral Zimbel, and you know, Admiral Hall of the Nurse Corps. I mean, it, as, as the first one, you, you have some doors open. Another door was that I was one of the first three that was chosen to get her bachelor's, courtesy of Dewitts. So I had duty under instruction, while I was on active duty, I went to school. Uh, that's all I had to do it, but that was my job. So, okay, uh, and I'll tell you, you don't ever say never. Because, you know, this is it, my bachelor's. I, I'm, I really didn't think I'd go for a bachelor's, but okay. But I'm really not going to get a, a, a master's because they would go, oh, you didn't tell me? No, I'm not going to get my master's. Well, don't say that because guess what? The door will open uh, when it's ready. Anyway, um, I, I will tell you that my life has been blessed and has been directed uh, through some very stoppable moments. Um, I was a single parent. Um, my daughter was just a few years old when I became a single parent. I was determined to do something for her that I didn't have. I wanted to, I wanted to and, and I don't want to offend anybody because I know fast food is a way to go. That is a lie. But years ago, the, the minimum wage was not what it is today. And I, I knew that I needed to do more. And that was my motivation to even try to go back and be a, an associate degree nurse. Um, that, that, that motivation sometimes is what keeps us going. And that certainly was the case for me. Um, all, all of these steps, all of these moments in life, you know, they're what helped me to be able to claim I am now a master's prepared nurse educator. Um, I, I do have a sense of accomplishment. I, I, I don't want to say that I'm proud. I, I, I mean, it's not a pride. It is just a sense of accomplishment and a support from God that I appreciate. That because I acknowledge that He's been in control the whole way. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tell my only nursing joke that I can think of. Okay? <laughs> um, and, and I'll tell you, the neurons, you know, as you get older, you know, the neurons don't fire quite as quick as, as before. But even before, I couldn't remember jokes. But this is my joke. Okay. So there's this little old lady. She's like in her 90s. She's lived a good life. Her husband has been passed away for like 10 years or so. And her children, her adult children, are going, you know, um, I know you want to live alone, but really, let's let's look at some nursing homes. You know, they have some really good ones. She said, you know, go ahead. You go ahead and research. I know you'll have to find me a good one. Go ahead and do that. I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being by myself, and I don't want to move in with you kids. You have your own life. So, okay, so the kids research, and they go online, and they set these appointments to do these tours. And so, you know, they take mom and they say, oh, they're playing bingo. Oh, bingo, okay. So she's going, I'll just sit right here, okay? So she's sitting on, she's watching the bingo activity, and the and, and hospital administrator takes the children off and is showing them to them. So, okay, she's watching these, and, and she starts kind of leaning on this side. She's going like this, and, and this aide comes and puts these pillows up and props her up, and, Gets her all set up nice and straight, okay. So, you know, the bingo's going on, she's kind of watching everything, and then she starts going like, she's tipping this Oh no, the aide comes and pushes her, gets her straight, puts more pillows, gets her nice and straight. So, she says, okay. So the children go, 
the bathroom and tour, and they go, well, come on, Mom, let's get in the car and go through the drive. And she, well, Mom, what did you think of it? You know, and they have, you know, the great activities, the, the kitchen facilities awesome, the rooms are beautiful. I just think it would be so nice. What do you think? Well, that might be true. 